What's going on everybody, it's AG here. So today I'm going to continue releasing my preseason top 25 college football rankings. We've done number 25, we've done the honorable mentions, so today we're going to be taking a look at number 24. I am going to be releasing one of these each day during the week as we lead up to the football season, but let's go ahead and reveal number 24. All right, so number 24, I have SMU. All right, it's SMU, fresh out of the American Conference, headed to the ACC. How is that transition going to look? And rarely would I put a team in my top 25 that is making that transition because usually, usually year one, it's going to be difficult. That's not going to, it's just not going to happen year one. You know, it's kind of out of the expectations. But last year, they were one of, if not the best G5 schools, number one. They've got a lot of guys returning from that roster, but also with the transfer portal, you can instantly improve this roster, you know, at the drop of a hat. And looking at their schedule last year, looking at their roster last season, I mean, looking at this, there is reason for optimism here. Not too many losses last year. Kept it relatively close with Oklahoma and TCU. They've got their quarterback back, Preston Stone. He's going to be an all-ACC candidate, all maybe all-American top candidate with the numbers he's going to put up this season. You can't really judge that last game because that game in Tulane, bowl game-wise and uh, conference championship-wise, they were without their quarterback, Stone, which is their best player. So he's going to be back this year, and they have absolutely destroyed it in the transfer portal. SMU is cooking with money here, and I like what they put together here with this roster. But let's look at their transfer portal a little bit here. All right, so looking at all these guys, most of these guys are going to be from Power 4, Power 5 conference schools. So they're adding talent that can instantly upgrade their team, number one. And I like where they've done it, too. They've focused on the trenches, all right, so they can compete on the interior, on the offensive line, on the defensive line with these power schools. I like what they've done there. So you've got, you know, for example, a D lineman from Miami, offensive lineman from Arkansas, another offense tackle from Arkansas, an edge rusher from Texas. You've got tight end coming over from Michigan, a D lineman from Texas Tech, and then another D lineman from Arkansas, D lineman from West Virginia, and so on. You also got a corner from AM and a wide receiver from Miami here. But the big one here, Savion Bird, all right, bringing in an Oklahoma offensive tackle. Also, Nate Anderson, Oklahoma offensive guard, bringing in a D lineman from Georgia, DN from Ohio State. So you can see they're loading up here with big name schools, you know, not just throwing out random names, you know, o Oklahoma, Ohio State, Georgia. Those are big name schools that recruit really good. So if you can pull in those backups to play at SMU, I think they're headed in the right direction. And obviously they, you know, it's going to be an adjustment jumping up to the ACC. But with this roster they have, there's no reason they can't continue one in the ACC. And let alone looking at their schedule. Let's go ahead and look at their schedule this season. All right, so look at their schedule. There's really no games here that are just unwinnable. The main ones you're going to fo focus on is that three-game stretch there, TCU, Florida State, and Louisville. Now, I think they have improved roster-wise to where they are better than TCU now. I realize they lost to them last year, but I think the portal, they improved this team enough to where they can definitely beat this team. But looking at Florida State and Louisville, those are the main two games there that are the question marks, you know, and I think they can play with them. SMU is borderline top five in the ACC for me right now, power ranking wise. But besides those two, there's not any games where they're just, you just look at it and like, oh yeah, they're probably going to lose that one. Yes, they lost to Boston College in the bowl game, but you can't really read too much into bowl games now. So Florida State and Louisville are the main games here. And I think they can win both of those, frankly. And it wouldn't be out of their own possibility if SMU makes a run and somehow winds up in the college football playoff looking at this schedule. But that is why I have SMU at number 24. Who would be your number 24 in your preseason top 25? Would SMU be in your rankings? Would they be in your honorable mentions? Would they be nowhere close? Let me know. Comment down below. Make sure to like this video and subscribe.